What's up guys and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide. This is part 8 and we're going to be going through Bergenworth. Yeah, so this is a small part but we felt that it has to be its own part because it really is a, it's an independent area. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of stuff that you want to do after this as well. Like This is um, where, like, after you beat this boss, the time in the game changes again. So like after, the, after Amelia it goes to Nightfall yeah. and then after Rom it's the Red Moon. So the Red Moon is when shit really hits the fan. Um, so there's a lot of NPC quest lines to wrap up after the Red Moon. There's a lot of things that become available after the Red Moon that we're not going to touch right away. But there's some stuff that we probably will do at the end of this. But first things first, we're going to get all these items. Now, these guys, when they jump in the air, just dodge it because you can't hit them out of that flying animation. Um, so just dodge it. Um, if they grab you, they will start to inflict frenzy on you. And we all love frenzy. Yeah, it's uh, truly a great mechanic that was well thought out. Now, these guys are actually quite quite sturdy, like they've got a lot of, a lot of health. Um, so the These guys are called Garden of Eyes, by the way. Tron, it should do fairly decent damage to them. Yeah, like these things are kin, so they take a lot of bolt damage. Yeah. So just fuck them up with it. Another really good thing about the Tauntress is it absolutely destroys the fucking brain sucker Cthulhu things. Exactly, so I mean this guy gave us a lot of hassle the first time around. Nah, it's not them. this one, it's the one that was it's the one that's in um No I know but even then this guy gives us an issue as well. But uh, you know obviously Tron is killing these guys pretty well. Now there's one NPC in this area that is an absolute tough yeah, pain in the ass. NPC hunter. And you could argue that you could do Nightmare Frontier at this point instead of the next part. You could, but you miss out on a really good bolt gem. Which makes Nightmare Frontier just super easy kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, really, although this is a technical step up in difficulty, because the area is so small, we're like, you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, like, the, 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 really the only tough part of this area is being overwhelmed by the boss's, like, little minions, which kind of happens a little bit in this, but I managed to recover. And the, uh, the hunter is a real bitch because every hunter in the game that uses the Rose Marinus does ridiculous damage. And it also files so quickly that it interrupts your R1 sometime as well. And it will almost it will always connect before your R1 does to stop them from shooting the Rose Marinus because it's fucking insane. But you know, I hope because NP NPCs are like NPC hunters are are a challenge, but because you can kinda of like spam parry and do kinda of cheap tactics to kill them, they're not not a super tough thing to come across. Now there are some items back there, but first thing I want to prioritise is getting this shortcut open because that takes us like right back to the lantern. So if you do die here, then it's a good thing that you do have the shortcut open because it will make it much quicker to get back to this section. You only have to run past the guy at the very beginning, and then jump through here, and that's you back. Yeah, it means you don't need to kill all these stupid guys as well. So yeah, because there's quite a few of them in this area. I think after this guy, there's like one more because two of them drop down from up uh, from up top. Which is a pain in the ass, but we took care of them before we opened the shortcut. <laughs> um, now these guys here, you probably, you might have seen a few speedrunners do this already. The uh, these giant fucking fireball spitting centipede things. Speedrunners use the tail of these things to give themselves like a little uh, a little boost in momentum to jump up and over that fence so that they get to Rom without going inside the Bergenworth like mansion uh, school building thing. You can do that? Yeah, that's that's what they've been doing in the speedruns. Like that's how they do it without the uh, the key. Wow. It's pretty funny. So like they'll run past this and then immediately quit reload to reset all the positions and then they'll just do a 180 run and jump right on it and then they'll fly over it. Wow. It's, it's pretty funny, they go right up and over this rail and then as soon as they hit that little glowing pool they just fall through into the ROM fight. It's pretty funny. You guys can probably find that online, I'm, I've not been able to do it yet. It's, it's a, a particular skill that I've not acquired yet. Yeah, uh, we, we've never been that great at speedrunning techniques, it's always more about yeah. encyclopedic knowledge and specific skills to get past certain things. As yeah, we're all about practicality, not... Um, like shaving five seconds off of Bergenworth. Yeah. And shit like that. So that's Peril Slug, that's a ritual, uh, not a ritual, a chalice material. Yeah, so it's not really anything that's. <laughs> at this point, it's just a lore item. Really. This hunter here uses Threaded Cane. Now, the good thing about Threaded Cane is that in the whip mode, it's really easy to parry. Um, I'm just really fucking bad. I don't know what's been going on with these last, like. I, I don't know why I was playing so bad, but this bitch almost fucks me up. And there's Rose Marinus. Beautiful. All that range, all that, all that, like. 
that big cone in front of it. It's not really doing that much damage to you at all. Really. I got my iframes off pretty quickly then. But obviously, I mean, you just using the uh, spam ta tactics with the the blunder bust because that's that's what it's for. Um, now this one, this NPC does have a few arcane spells. As you've seen, it has Augur of Abritus, um, uh, which is the big tentacle arm reach thing. That. Um, you can also use a Call Beyond, which does a shitload of damage, so try to be at full HP when you fight this hunter at all times, because the Call Beyond can almost one-shot you. Yeah. So, uh, definitely not a, a hunter to be taken lightly. We would definitely also not... Uh, we wouldn't recommend fighting this hunter at any level lower than what we're currently at, because yeah. obviously your defence scales your level, so... You know, you don't you don't want to have any less defense than what we've got. Otherwise, you're probably going to have a really difficult time. Yeah, because we're already taking a lot of damage from this hunter. Like this hunter will uh, four shot me or five shot me with a cane. Yeah. And I'd rather not deal with that shit. I mean, chances are you, you wouldn't be doing that much extra damage if you did do Nightmare Frontier. It's more about the damage that you're taking. Yeah. But I mean, you might you might get lucky. You might get a few chunk drops in Nightmare Frontier from the uh, from all the lizards and stuff like that. And you might get a you might have a better upgraded Tonitrus than we do at this point. Do a little bit more damage, but you're you should be fine at this level anyway. Yeah. Um, gave gave me a little bit of a run for my money, but that's okay. So I just I just took a blood vial there. As you can see, my health is just refilling all the way back to full pretty quickly. Oh, plus it is a small area as well. So if you do that, it's not an issue. It's not really an issue. Because you can just run straight back and just grind yourself into them until you do defeat the boss. Well, yeah, NPC. You, you are always, you're pretty much guaranteed to always get your blood stain back if you do die. So you don't need to worry about that. Now, so, coming upstairs is for the key. And um, if you're playing online and a bell ringing maiden has appeared, she spawns up here. She's at the very top, up next to the chest, um, which has the magic buff uh, empty phantasm shell. She would be up in this section. That's where the uh, bell ring woman is spawned. So if you don't want to be invaded, you got to kill her, of course. So we should probably talk about Rom, the boss, at this stage, because we are about to defeat Rom. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, defeat him. And Rom seems to be a very polarised issue. It's either a super walk in the park for some people or an, a massive wall that they can't seem to get past. Mm -hmm. So for us, we just went with tried and true, run at the brick wall until it falls. So we're just going to focus purely on Rom during this encounter. Yeah. And um, we're going to ignore the spiders, get in there with the Tauntress, do as much damage as we can, um, and try and beat them as quickly as possible. So there's a bit where all these spiders are on me, and yeah, it's, it becomes a little bit tricky. Talk to this guy to gain two insight, and then after you've gained your two insight, beat the shit out of him to get the eye rune, which gives you much better drop rate. And um, now. I should mention eye runes and stuff that increase your drop rate. Um, it doesn't make the rarer items more likely to appear. Um, so, like, if you're going up against something like, say, the wolves in Cathedral Ward, which always drop an item when you kill them, you're not more likely to get a chunk because you're wearing the eye rune. Yeah. You're still going to get whatever they feel like dropping. Okay, so, te our technique for ROM is pretty simple. You want to run to its right side, although we do go for the left, but I feel that the right side it seems to attack slightly less, or it's got a... It just The right side seems to be better, but you want to buff the fucking Tonitrus and you just go to town on it, Yeah, just keep whacking it and then get out of there when it teleports. So, the other way to do this is, of course, to take care of his little spiders, which is a little bit longer. They take a lot more damage if you hit them in the ass. Yeah. Um, these guys do a lot of damage as well, and after Rom teleports once he gains, uh, he actually is able to attack you. He has, like, AoEs, and he's able to rain giant arcane boulders down. He has an arcane version of Firestorm as well, um, as well as an AoE and a flailing melee, which you're probably about to see right here. So no, that's his AoE. So it was fucked up a little bit there for us because we you ended he, up hitting his he head. He walked backwards, so I hit his head instead. Yeah. Now, another thing... I'm that's the arcane range, sorry. I just, I, like, I've figured out Rom's moveset. When he stands up on his back legs, he's going for his arcane rain attack. When he curls his entire body like an AIU shape, yeah. he's going for his AoE. Um, and the other animation, the other at range animation will be for the arcane firestorm. I don't think he uses it on me, does he? Um, I'm not sure. So as you can see, I went in a few times and not really managed to do much. So this is arcane rain because he's up on his hind legs. Oh, well, he's up on his, up, he's raised the front part of his fatness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of spiders. 
Um, you do have time, by the way. If you take out an entire group of spiders and leave just Rom himself, then you've got time to get a few free hits in without worrying about the spiders. Every time he teleports, he will summon a new group of spiders, and he only teleports three times per boss fight. Now, the reason we decided to use this just rush in tactic is because killing the spi killing the spiders can actually be an issue because if you're focusing on just the spiders, you can yeah. end up end up getting hit with his arcane attacks or another spider can pump and hit you. But if you just go to town on him, chances are most of the time a Tornish's combo can actually take off a full third of his HP. Yeah. So you do one combo and just keep keep hitting him and then you'll go, right, he's teleported. You do it again, that's another third of his health, and then you just run at him and then just get that other third, the last third of his health on the third teleport and generally that's always worked for me and because you're just going in to the boss using that technique yeah you don't feel so bad if you fuck it up because you're like well i've just ran in i've not waited it took me two minutes yeah so i'll just run in it'll take me two minutes to try it again yeah and um, either way you make the you make the wrong boss fight rather quick either you die or he dies pretty quickly but you're not wasting time so yeah, it isn't the most reliable way to beat him. Really, the most reliable way to beat him is to have a to have a co-op summon there, because when you're in co-op, there's a glitch where the spiders spawn before Rom teleports, and the spiders don't move, so you can beat them up that way. So when you go to the statue at Rom, you will get the Red Moon cutscene that takes you off that little platform that we're at. Now we're just going to quickly run into Yahar Ghoul, and before we do anything, we want to get that one item that we picked up at the beginning. Yeah. And we also want to pick up this uh, gemstone here. Now, we don't want to do Yahar Ghoul right now because, again, it's a step up in difficulty. Yeah, and we're going to go to Nightmare Frontier before Yahar yeah. Ghoul. Now, the souls that we get in Nightmare Frontier makes us a perfect us, level for Yahar Ghoul. Gives us like an extra seven levels or something like yeah. that, which is quite a lot in terms of defense in Bloodborne. So that's really good. So now it's uh, back to popular all our soul packets. So Rom gives you a rank 12 soul packet, which is pretty good. I think he's the only boss that gives you a soul. Yeah. Fancy that. Now, um, again, we wanted to pick up that one particular arcane gem because if we put that in the Tornatrice, it gives us 16% extra bolt damage. Now, yeah. most things in the game are actually weak to bolt damage, so it means that we're doing a good chunk extra damage to things that are weak. And the thing is, right, so look, what you're seeing right there is that our bolt damage is 64 plus 11. Now, the 11 doesn't sound like much, even though it has a 16.5% increase on it. But when you buff the Tornatrice, the buff also gets the 16.5% bonus as well. So it greatly increases your buffed damage as well as just your damage without the buff. Um, and plus, as Tony said, there are a lot of things in this game that are weak to lightning. It's pretty much either weak to lightning or fire or it's neutral to both of them. Yeah, that's uh, why like Arc Arcane is pretty much pointless because if something is weak to Arcane, it will also be weak to either fire or lightning. Yeah. And all the Arcane items are garbage, so... You yeah. might as well just go with Fire or Lightning or Blood Tinge. Um, the thing about Blood Tinge though, is that Blood Tinge is an entire build investment. Yeah. Um, Blood Tinge, you can only use a Chikage, maybe a Rate Your Palash, you can only like really use the Evelyn, and that's really it if you want to maximise the build. You don't have a choice really in terms of other weapons to use. So now we're coming back to Central Yarnum because we've killed Rom and that's advanced stuff as we said earlier. So we're going to kill Gilbert to get the claw mark rune which gives us 20% bonus visceral yeah. damage which is really good. He'll be there as soon as you go to the central Yarnum uh, lantern After if you're done. Run. If you've already talked to him before on. No, no, oh, no he's, he's there, there, he's there anyway. Yeah, as soon as the red moon passes Gilbert, is, uh, Gilbert becomes a little wolf. So we're putting on a 20% claw mark rune because that's going to come in handy pretty much all the time. Uh, you should probably try and get good uh, parrying some of the regular enemies because these guys are... Um, these are, the, like, these are the ones you're going to run into most often, so you may as well get good at their timing, because that actually does help with some of the bosses that you can parry in terms of judging it. Um, okay, so right now yeah. we are outside the um, the little girl's house that we were at in episode 1. Now, once the Red Moon shows up, her sister shows up, and if you want, you can give her the Red Messenger ribbon, or if you want to keep the Red Messenger ribbon, you, do, you just you don't give her it. But, yeah. if you give her the Red Messenger ribbon, this lets you get the White Messenger ribbon, so, it just depends if you prefer red or white really for this. So, as you saw there, we just quit and reload and after you've given her the ribbon, you see that she isn't in her house, but she's down this ladder. She committed suicide, or she fell, depending on your outlook. Yeah, so this means that she then drops the white messenger ribbon, so it's just down to whether, whatever ribbon you prefer. Yeah, I mean, if you want to end the life of another innocent, then go for it. Yeah. 
And now back to the dream. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. We're just gonna see if we can level up at all with the souls, uh, the blood echoes that we've got left. Um, as ever, make sure all your <clears throat> weapons are repaired. Check your runes and all that shot sort of shit as well. All your blood gems too. Make sure you're like as optimized as possible. Just get into the habit of doing that all the time. Yeah. But um, that's it for Bergenworth, guys. So yep. And the next episode is Nightmare Frontier. Mhm. Mm so you can click the last episode, which was Yosefka's Clinic. Um, pretty quick one. So it's Bargain Worth. Um, and yeah, we're doing Nightmare Frontier next, so I guess we'll we'll see you guys in that one. Yep. Bye, guys.